people said, stop. Today on Michigan's Economic Hospital, Dr. Granholm performs Democrat tax surgery and kills the patient. For nearly 20 years, his hard work has earned him the respect and support of Democrats, Republicans, Independents, and law enforcement. Vote yes on Referred Law 6. You're voting for life. That's just common sense, South Dakota. Tom Hamilton wants to turn back the clock to a time when teachers could strike without penalty. They've had an iron grip on Washington, D.C. for decades, and federal law has kept workers powerless to get the union boss's hands out of their pockets. Until now. Paid for by the Michigan Republican Party. It was a battle between good and evil, right and wrong, just and unjust. Stone knew what he had to do. Killing was his business, and business was good. Ten Seconds to Death from Miramax Films. Rated R for Mature. Coming up in our next segment, making money by refinancing your own home. Sound complicated? We'll show you how easy it can be when you do business with Acceptance Mortgage. We'll be right back with Texas is Talking on Fox 4 Dallas. Severe weather. It affects everyone. And here in the Treasure Valley, no one knows severe weather better than John Sanderson. When severe weather hits, you can count on John to bring you fast, up-to-the-minute weather reports. Storm Tracker 12 with John Sanderson, only on New Center 12. Live WGS JBC Radio Smooth 90.5 FM. This is Jaleel West, live on the air. And uh, I want to talk about, you know, the police. Um, I want to talk about the police. You know, I did have this one thing where uh, I feel like we should conduct ourselves a different way. You know, not everybody, you don't have to like the police, but at the same time, we do have to respect them. So if they do ask us a question, you know, we should answer the question. If they ask for our ID, you know, we shouldn't always be such, you know, so resistant to the police just because of, you know, past issues and stuff like that. You know, how do you feel about that, Rob? Well, you know, with me being a former Chicago police officer uh, for approximately seven years, uh, I um, have had my experience on the street and I've had uh, my experience from being a rookie to being on the street to working gang crimes. Uh, at the same time, uh, uh, Jaleel, um, there, there's a thing we, we learned in the police academy called the use of force. And uh, we did not learn choke codes. So there was nothing taught to us about choke codes in the academy. Uh, we did use our batons and learn how to get beaten up by our fellow classmates with the baton to see how it felt and how it felt getting pepper sprayed in our face. Um, we also had the experience of uh, knowing how to handle a situation because we went through mock seminars. Uh, actually, like They were actually like real uh, training uh, scenarios where we actually went into a dark room. We didn't know what was going on and until it was like a bar or a house or, and we had to uh, perform as we are actually on the street and what would we do? And we were being evaluated at that time in the Academy, but I don't uh, see how, uh, I, 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 when I was on the street, I never became a threat to anyone. Uh, I've had, uh, to pull my gun, a few times, you know, when I got out to approach a car for safety because they kept speeding and we got out. And, uh, yes, I've had to draw my weapon, but have I ever fired my weapon? No, actually, there was a uh, time I remember um, we I was doing a traffic stop. I was a rookie and we got state troopers flying right past us. We didn't know what was going on. So we ended up following the car onto uh, the Dan Ryan Expressway. And as we went onto the Dan Ryan Expressway, uh, the squ- uh, state trooper had a car pulled over, but he didn't know what was going on. He thought it was just speeding, but we got a call that it was a murder situation. I got out the car and I had my draw- gun drawn and lo and behold, it was my neighbor in the building that I was living in. 
And he was a young 17-year-old guy, 16, 17-year-old guy. And he lived right across the hall from me. And I guess it shocked him because he didn't know I was a, a, a police officer. And it shocked me because he had a semi-automatic in between his legs. So, um, yeah, I, I, I did have uh, the experience of that. There was one time that I did draw my weapon and I did fire and kill somebody while I was on duty. Uh, but that was in the line of self-defense because uh, um, the person had a young lady held at hostage situation, and basically um, it, it was it wasn't it was a judgment call situation, either him or me. Yeah, well, I know you know the police sometimes they do take it too far, but like the situation I told you where I was sitting outside in the car talking on the phone, you know. I could have handled that a different way. Oh, I live here. Oh, I'm supposed to be here. I'm not doing anything wrong, you know, and I could have got mad and got upset, and then I would have been in jail or, you know, something could have happened to me. But instead, I just was like, you know, I answered the question, they asked for my ID, they asked me what was my address, and I told them, and they just they kept going, you know. And uh, I seen a video on Facebook where it was a couple of college students where I guess the police was asking him, for his ID and stuff, and he didn't want to give it to him. He was like, why are you asking me for my ID? I'm supposed to be here. You know, why are you messing with me? And then, so, they was like, oh, we're going to take you to jail for, you know, we're going to arrest you for not, you know, cooperating. And now, for like eight minutes, he was resisting arrest the whole time. And it's like, if you would have just gave him your ID, you would have just answered the questions, they probably would have left and kept going, you know. Police don't, they don't want to arrest you if you're not doing anything wrong. Are you sure about that? I mean, sometimes certain situations, but I mean, all my run is with the uh, police. They have not been bad. So I can only go from my experience. You know, all my run is I wasn't really doing anything wrong. You know, they asked me the questions. I told them the truth and they kept going. So my my situations with the police officers haven't been as bad as other people's. And, uh, you know. I think it's just that's just the situation, you know. It doesn't always have to be, you know, oh, we hate the police, you know. Everybody makes mistakes. It's good and bad and everywhere and everywhere. So I feel like we just have to not stereotype the police officers like they stereotype us. You know, look at them different, you know. Don't always act, you know, a certain way and, you know, towards them for them just trying to do their job. That's just That's just what I think. And so, yeah, uh, and how do you feel about that, Rob? Well, you know, uh, JW, uh, you know, things are going to uh, be a little different now with uh, young people being approached as well as adults. Uh, anytime when we see officers, uh, um, I was just recently pulled over. Uh, approximately two, two or three weeks ago by Carroll Stream Police. Yes, I see Carroll Stream Police. Uh, five or uh, one squad car pulled up uh, behind me and basically uh, stated that uh, I had a bulb out on my license plates. And this was at night. And uh, I uh, informed him, hey, you are being videoed. This is live on TV. And he decided to uh, give me heads up. Uh, next thing I know, I got five squad cars coming and they're pulling me out the car. I'm like, okay, what, what's going on? Did I do something wrong, officer? No, 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 no. I didn't get a ticket. I didn't get a warning, but it made me, it delayed me for getting to the radio station. Um, there are some good cops out here. There are some bad cops. But... Can we distinguish and say, okay, that's a good cop, bad cop. He got on a good shirt, a good blue shirt is a good cop, white shot is a bad cop. We, we can't tell. So we our uh, adrenaline is going to be always on the high whenever we see a cop approaches pro truck car. So we have no other choice but to uh, be on the uh, uh, high end. And if if we can't uh, do anything else about that, then, you know, we, we're going to be edgy all the time. So, 
we're we going to let Jaleel uh, continue on with this interview, and he's going to tell us about some current affairs and things of that nature. So, ladies and gentlemen, give us a call right now. That's 708-343-3906. That's call now. 708-343-3906. That's 708-343-3906. So, if you got any questions, just give me a call. So, give me a call. 708 708- 343-3906 Your radio never sounded better Wait for it. Wait for it. Do, 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 do
Stop forgetting the work that I won't do. I give the word to you if you want me to.